Hey, Teddy K here for the Best Buy blog, and in this video review, we take a look at a feature rather than a product, and that's the ASUS ScreenPad 2.0. It is an LCD trackpad within a laptop antenna with a big screen. So what I have here is the ASUS VivoBook S15, but it's not the laptop I want to focus on here. It's actually this. It's the ScreenPad 2.0. It's this illuminated trackpad that is essentially a screen unto itself. It is the second iteration of the feature uh, ASUS had done it before, and I haven't tested that one, so I don't have the comparison to make from one to the other. However, ASUS says that they've overhauled it and made it very, very different from the first one. So I'm gonna go on that premise that me as a new user, and you perhaps as a new user, would be using this for the first time. So when I was going through this, I, I was sort of trying to get my, my bearings with it. And there is a section in here to help you along. So uh, with some of the, the basic, uh, it's like a basic tutorial just to get you to understand how you can make the two screens work together. So for example, if you wanted to, you could snap an app from here down to here. So uh, bear with me here as I try, <laughs> as I do that. Actually, I need to launch the app first. So let's say I launch Netflix. Okay, so I've got Netflix here. Now, if I wanted to snap it, all I'd have to do is just this, okay, hold. And then there's the icon that pops up and all of a sudden it's over here. So it, it's a, uh, at first it's, it seems a bit disjointed when you look at it or when you try it, because it just doesn't seem as intuitive. I mean, after all, you're using a trackpad also to navigate the main screen. So you have to get used to this, to, to the point of pressing the, the, the side button here. So uh, down in the left-hand corner, there is the trackpad button. So when you press that, it dims completely and you now use it as a regular trackpad. It's very responsive. So I don't, I don't have an issue with uh, at all with how it works as a trackpad. Uh, I, I felt that it worked very, very well. I think the challenge is, is in making sure that you figure out how to do all these things quickly. Because again, you don't want to interrupt your workflow too much where you're constantly looking at one screen and then the other especially when you have to train uh, trackpad to, you know, to, from trackpad to, to screen pad. And so uh, ASUS, to try and simplify that, did a three button sort of gesture like this. So you do it like that, and then you can start using it as a trackpad. Uh, and then when you go, you can go back like that, or you can just press the X. So I, the, the three finger gesture definitely did help. There were a couple false positives that did happen uh, where I definitely didn't, uh, didn't mean to uh, turn into a trackpad, but I did in any case. So again, I'm just gonna move this. Uh, let's move Netflix back there. Moving apps is one thing, but then there's also the fact that some of what's on here is supposed to support existing apps. So for example, we have a few here that are designed for Microsoft Office. So for Word, PowerPoint, and Excel, there are these support apps that ASUS has. There are others, so there is like a, like a Photoshop. Uh, in fact, I, I installed it here, yeah. It's, so we have Photoshop here, we have Google Chrome. So some of the apps that you would normally use on a desktop, you can use on here too. And now, in fairness, any app that runs here is probably gonna run here because you're just snapping the window over. So it's not necessarily that there's a different OS running here than there is on here. It's just, but the integration isn't always seamless. So it, it's hard for me to describe sitting here. I think you, when you use it, you, you, you start to realize some of the nuances uh, of, what, of what works well and what needs a little work, so to speak. So, but for the most part, um, I think this type of a setup is necessary if you have a workflow that demands that you have two screens or you know, you, it necessitates having a second screen in some way. Um, I, I wouldn't necessarily use this for any entertainment reasons. I mean, yeah, sure, like I could have a Netflix or I could have a video playing on the small screen here uh, and then just do something else on here. The thing is, of course, is that I still have to use a trackpad. Now I could use a mouse to forego that so I can still use this and have a mouse at the same time. So I, I, it is possible to use both of these and then have a mouse as well. Uh, that could work. If that's a workflow that works for you, that could work as well. There, uh, There is a, a reasonable level of flexibility here. The only thing is that I think when it comes to downloading apps to work on the screen pad, uh, they could be a little easier to find. That's one gripe that I did have about using this. Uh, technically, you could download an app from your desktop and then move it here. You could do that too. But ASUS also offers a sort of a store or a, a repository 
that you can use to also download apps directly to the to the screen pad as well so you have a couple of different ways to do that now that being said uh anything that you essentially want to do on here sorry i, I should i should point here on here you kind of can do here however just bear in mind that it is miniaturized here so it's not like once you snap an app right into the small screen that all of a sudden the interface changes or the ui changes so that for example if you wanted to tap an x to close an app like it's bigger or it's something that you can access a little bit easier on the smaller screen it's not the case uh, that I, I will give asus credit it is interesting how easy it was to actually tap on really really tiny text uh, and get it right uh, kudos to them it, it i did notice that i was i i could easily close an app when i wanted to i did not expect that because when i saw how small everything was i thought well okay i don't know i think the intention though ultimately was more so to snap the app back to the big screen and then do whatever it is you wanted to but uh, sometimes you just want to make adjustments and you can do that on here as opposed to always moving it back here yeah I, I i don't know that the concept was to constantly move them back and forth especially if you just wanted to do one thing and then another thing in any case, I know I'm rambling a little bit here, but it's just, this is a very interesting and unique feature in a laptop uh, when you have a second display that is doubling as a trackpad. It's, it's a concept that I can see working in some respects. So for example, the number pad, I think is great. Uh, if you're doing anything related to numbers, the number pad on here, fantastic. You can have a calculator as well. Uh, the handwriting tool, I didn't necessarily have use for it, but I could see why it would be useful, especially if you needed to, to sign something or you needed to do anything related to some sort of handwriting or calligraphy. That feature is in there. It's actually an app on its own here. So you have that. So QuickKey is one of the things I like the most because it allows you to add shortcuts and apply them to an app that you're using. So for example, you could have the shortcuts laid out on the screen here and then apply them on here. Uh, it can be specific to an app too. So for example, if, uh, if I wanted Photoshop to have its own set of shortcuts, and of course these are the shortcuts that Photoshop already uses, but I am able to use them as just single taps on the screen here, uh, I could do that. I can actually program them in, and then whenever Photoshop runs, I can then have access to those short keys. Very good idea. It, it actually works out quite well, uh, especially even in practice, because again, if you're doing a short key, you can swipe back and use the trackpad when you need to. It, it's it's one of those it's one of the workflows I like the most when it came to this type of setup, uh, as unique as it was. So, battery life. I got to touch on that because when you have a second screen on a laptop, you got to wonder how the battery life is going to hold up. It wasn't bad, uh, although I tended to use this laptop plugged in more often than not uh, and then when I didn't really have a need for the screen in a particular reason I just use it as a trackpad and the fact that it's dimmed the lights dimmed means it's not killing that much of the battery at all so really I think it depends on how much of the second screen you're using as opposed to the main screen the main screen is gonna be the same thing as any other laptop especially a 15 inch of this model but again the components inside are not going to kill it so who is this set up for? When we're talking about ScreenPad 2.0, who is this for? Well, I think I qualified it earlier in saying that if it's, if it's a workflow or if it's something that you're using or apps that you're using that would benefit from a second screen, perhaps you're an accountant, you're working with numbers, maybe it's Photoshop, you're, you know, you need the shortcuts, maybe it's, I don't know, an Excel sheet and you can use some of the, some of the different uh, shortcuts there too. Those sorts of scenarios are the ones that I envision being the most ideal for this setup like this. Not, this is not really to me an entertainment type of thing. This is not something that you're, you're doing for consumption. Like, you know, if you're buying this laptop to primarily consume content, I, I really don't think you're going to get much out of this screen at all, to be very honest with you. So uh, to me, this is more productivity focused and productivity centric and you should get it for those reasons and pretty much those reasons alone. And that's my review of the ASUS ScreenPad 2.0 on the ASUS VivoBook S15. It is available on other laptops. For the Best Buy blog, I'm Teddy K. Thanks for watching.